You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Entertaining, educating, and enlightening sports talk from your favorite sports family. And that guy is DC, you know? And I'm Big Q, and that guy is DC. And we are here for you. And we appreciate you for joining us on the Sports Coma today. And in this show, episode 187, 187 on the I'm podcast. I'm talking 187 on the Saints podcast. <laughs> you went all the way back on the <laughs> 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 Listen, man, one, podcast 187, this episode, we're going to talk about, you know, a lot of Saints-related issues. Pretty much this is going to be on all Saints podcasts. We're going to cover the draft picks, the Saints recap the 2018 NFL Saints draft. Yep. Well, also, we're going to let you know about the Saints undrafted free agents. Of course, you know, we know that's the second draft for a lot of the Saints players, uh, especially as of, you know, more than what, the last four or five years. The Saints have been really spectacular at – bringing in undrafted guys to help out. And they've gotten a reputation as a team to give undrafted guys a fair opportunity to compete for a starter position. So the Saints, they don't care, man. If you could play, they're going to they're gonna see what you got. I'm going to talk about some of those signings, the guys that they picked up today. We're going to break it down. We're going to also cover and, you know, and give our analysis on which is the weakest spot that's remaining after the draft. That was a good, good question posed by some guys out there. The weakest position still left on the team after the draft, after signing, the signing period, after the post-draft period, meaning the college free agent signings, which is your opinion? You can put it in the comment section. Let us know what you think. We'll tell you as well today on the podcast. We're going to talk about, we're going to look at the NFC South too. Of course, the Saints, along with Carolina, Atlanta, and Tampa Bay, we're going to look at their drafts and tell you, do we think some of these guys are going to pose any serious issues to the Saints' opportunity to win that Super Bowl? We're going to look at their drafts as well. And also, we're going to talk about the top 100. Of course, some of you guys have been watching the top 100. It's the show that they do, NFL does, as they count down uh, the top, 100 players of last season uh, coming into this season. I think that's how it goes in the D.C. Oh, yeah, that's how it goes. Okay, so we're going to break down some of the things that were said about Mike Thomas and Marshawn Lattimore, man. We're going to give you our word on it because uh, if they put them at where they put them, that's that's, that's stupid. And and that's just dumb and disrespectful on top Uh, of that. One is uh, 82, the other one's uh, 81. Yeah, yeah. So we – yeah, that's, that's just absolutely stupid. They do that for no other team on the top 100, I'm sure. So we're going to look at that. and we're Alvin gonna... Kamara better not be nowhere. At, at least he got to be in the 20s. At least. Alvin Kamara, yeah. Well, if Michael Thomas them that far down, I can imagine where they'll put Poe. Uh, yeah, well, Alvin, Alvin Kamara, Kamara did so. was like record-breaking last year, though, man. Yeah. Like 1,600 yards or something from scrimmage. And what, didn't, didn't he score like 12? 12 or 15 touchdowns? That might be true, D.C., but some of these guys, you know, who knows? They might have an extra grind here. But anyway, let's move into... I, I, I love it, though. I love it, though, because we love when we under uh, underrated. The Saints always have big years as underdogs. You realize that? Yeah, every true. Every time when they start jumping on our bad wagon, I'll be that's like, no, we, we drank, no! We drank in the juice, no! yeah. All right. Yeah, we start drinking the Kool-Aid. So that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to move into the the draft period here. And of course the Saints made some pretty good moves in the draft. We think, you know, a lot of people gave the Saints failing drafts. A lot of people said, well, the Saints came in, man, they did a pretty decent job of appeasing a lot of the issues the team had. Sean Payton came out and of course said, 
that they love Marcus uh, Davenport, that he could be one of those guys that one of the missing piece guys. And of course I get kind of apprehensive every time I hear some a coach says, yeah, we moved up with draft picks uh, to get a guy. And then we find like this guy's the final piece of the team to kind of bring, I'm kind of get, I get nostalgic and go back to the days of Sullivan, Mike Dicker. Sullivan. <laughs> Go back to the Ricky days Williams. of Mike Dicker and Ricky Williams. So just, but they gave out a whole draft up for Ricky Williams. That you know, was a little insane. But when, but when I hear a Saints coach say that, that always takes me back to that point. I, I got to get counseling <laughs> for that. But anyway, let's start it off with talking about some of the draft picks, D.C. The first one the Saints got was Marcus Davenport, big old guy, 6'5", 260-plus pounds out of uh, University of Texas at San Antonio. Uh, he's a terrific talent, runs a 4.6 uh, in the 40. Uh, has great arm size, hand size. Four point five, man, get it right. Uh, four point six. I hit four point six. We not sliding them in ten. It was four point five. Okay, so all right. He had fifty five tackles and five, eighteen. Uh, eight, excuse me, not eighteen, but eight and a half sacks last year in a row for the road runners. And we get him with the first pick. Of course, we traded a fifth round pick of this year and next year's first round draft pick to acquire Marcus Davenport. Uh, DC quickly thoughts on Mr. Davenport and a uh, uh, impact that he'll have coming up. Well, I'm, it's it's such a big impact. I'm gonna try to make it quickly. <laughs> right, we got a few other couple. <laughs> but uh, man, uh, y'all listen to the show. Y'all y'all heard us on draft night. I'm gonna keep going back to this because when I first heard about it, I knew he was good, and I was like, okay, he's gonna be a, a solid player. But we both were a little disgruntled about getting giving up that uh, extra first round pick on top of the fifth this year to get him. But man, uh, the more I go back and you listen to coaches, uh, you listen to his coaches, you you study the fact that he looked like Steve Urkel when he first went to college and he turned into Stefan uh, as a big, huge monster. This dude put on 60 pounds of muscle, you know, in college. He looked like complete string bean. And you see this guy go from nothing. Um, he was probably, he wasn't even barely a prospect, like, in, in, in college, like nobody, no teams really wanted him. That's why he went to a small school. And when he probably could have transferred, he stuck with the people that, you know, wanted him, which shows loyalty. And the dude is an absolute phenom, bro. He's a freak of nature. Uh, he beats people based on uh, turning his power into speed. Uh, basically, he just has a bull rush, very few swim moves, stuff like that. But he's so, like, opposing. Like, even without... A lot of technique. Every piece of tape I watch on this dude, he's affecting the quarterback. The offensive lineman is in the quarterback's lap pretty much every play he's on the field. Um, they double team him from time to time. Sometimes he gets one on ones, but when he gets one on ones, he's still affecting the quarterback by con- he controls the offense. Damn! Him- right, that's what I said, bro. And he bring him exactly where he want him to go. So this dude, uh, I think on the next level. Touching on one point, let me wrap it up. I know I got to make it quickly. Uh, on the next level, I think Marcus Davenport will be a very big impact player based on this. Every time a piece of tape I watched him, when he played competition that was good, he rose to the occasion. Um, talking about double-digit sack games, uh, making guys fumble. Um, he scored fumbles for touchdowns. And they basically almost shut out Baylor. Now, if anybody's familiar with college football, Baylor took to the last uh, plays in the fourth quarter to score. I don't think he – I don't know if he got – he might have got one sack that game. But that whole game, Baylor's offense was tailored towards staying away from Marcus Davenport. Yeah, and y'all know Baylor put up points. Force. He's definitely a force, man. Right. Uh, but he improves with his competition, bro. Senior day, every day he improved. He couldn't beat anybody on the first day of senior day. At the end of the senior day practices, nobody could, could guard him. So I, 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 I love it, and I like the fact that he's a true underdog and he's a constantly improving player, and he's very hungry. He wants to be great. So we, we, I think we got a diamond in ne- this guy. Next player is Traquan Smith, third-round selection, pick 27 for the Saints, wide receiver out, out, wide receiver out of UCF Central Florida, 6'2", 210 uh, for Mr. Traquan Smith. is pretty quick as well in the 40 full uh, 449 for him in the 40. Had 54 catches, 1,082 yards, and 13 touchdowns t- in 2017 for Central Florida. Of course, a lot of love was given to the Saints when they were able to obtain 
Mr. Traquan Smith. And Sean Payton was quoted as saying he's he's physical, big, blocks, and has size, strong hands, very competitive, a guy that has grit and toughness. So Sean Payton really likes the guy a lot. He said that the Saints didn't necessarily go into the draft thinking they'll need a receiver, but Smith was clearly a magnet, a grade that stood out above everyone else available at the time. And it's the key why Peyton mentioned is a blocking ability because he knows how receivers like Robert Meacham, Dever Henderson, and others earned their key roles in the past. And he fits in the bill with some of these guys. He has that speed, that size, that toughness. Uh, there he is, Traquan Smith. Uh, let's get to his uh, breakdown, DC, before the break. Yeah, Traquan is a, it's a speed guy, a guy that gets behind you, amazing blocker. I think that's what they really uh, like about him. Tay again, if he gets hurt, uh, you know, basically he's getting older. If he can't perform, we can plug Traquan right in. Or at least have him play uh, the Brandon Coleman spot while we put Brandon at the three, if possible. Um, Traquan is, is a perfect Saints player. I mean, he played in Saints colors <laughs> in a lot of his uniforms. And uh, he has very good hands. He can he can catch it over the middle. I don't think I don't know how much of that is going to be required of him in our offense because we got Michael Thomas basically locking that up. But um, he's the quintessential Saints player to me. Another hungry guy. We got a lot of guys with that mentality, man. They're they're hungry and just like Davenport, um, he didn't start football till late. And he basically was a guy that didn't know anything. He's still learning and steadily improving rapidly. This is this dude's fourth year playing football. <laughs> he's drafted into the NFL. So he's definitely a guy you can continue to work with, has a very high ceiling. And at the rate right now, he can already do a lot. So I think he comes in in the Saints offense, and he, he basically he shows out, man, when he gets his opportunity because we know we have a loaded receiver backfield, and this guy is a perfect guy to get depth. And we could allow him to sit if he needs to to learn some stuff, or if he's phenomenal, he can come in and play day one. Right, I, I I like his I like his abilities, man. To be quite honest with you, I think he's going to be a terrific player for the Saints for for a long time, and he'll be allowed to be able to be groomed. There's no forced start for him to do anything. The Saints could use him as they please, and he provides depth for that wide receiver position as well, along with the Saints signing Cameron Meredith. Uh, in the fourth round, the Saints go after Rick Leonard, offensive tackle from Florida State. Of course, Rick Leonard, a few years before he was playing def- on the defensive line, made the switch to off- offensive tackle to the offensive side of the ball. And key because a lot of the, the, the coaches there uh, thought that he probably would be better on that particular side of the ball. And obviously, uh, he was able to Saints found something in, in, in the fourth round. And Leonard, of course, he's huge. You know, he's 6'7", 311 pounds. Uh, his size makes it an incredible asset. He points to a potential. He has a potential ceiling, definitely, no doubt about it. And he was taken there. Uh, but a lot of people project him to go a lot lower. But the Saints seen in him a lot. He was recruited to uh, Florida State as a three-year, a three-star defensive end. <laughs> wow. And then he made the, the, the switch over to the de- defensive line where he be quickly became a starting tackle. He made 19 starts, including 13 games in 2017 at Florida State's right tackle. Well, in a selection, you know, he he's just a terrific, a terrific talent there. And, of course, he joins another Florida State member on the Saints squad, Mr. P.J. Williams, uh, we, who we are also hoping <laughs> comes up and shows up. Uh, what's your thoughts on Rick Leonard, the fourth round selection offensive tackle out of Florida State? I ain't got a lot to say on Rick, man, because I think the Saints' track record with offensive linemen speaks for itself. I mean, we hit a few does here or there. You see uh, a lot of guys really pan out and do a lot all the time. But most of the people that we take high, like we took Leonard, I'm trusting in the Saints staff. I think they really see something that's got You know what I'm saying? So, oh, man, specimen, dude. Great run blocker. Oh, that's what we're going to need, especially when Drew Brees and Harris are coming on to get a quarterback. So I think they're moving him up for the future. We may not see a lot of him this year, but this is a guy that we're definitely going to put on the shelf, and we're going to build up. You know, kind of time. That is Rick Leonard, man. He's going to definitely provide depth behind Jerron Schreiber. Might get a little burn depending on what uh, Tyron Armstead looks like. It's, you know, hopefully he's fully healthy this year. But anyway, we'll get back to finishing the rest of our draft picks on the other side of the break. And also we'll talk about the weakest spot left after the draft and other topics on the other side of the break. Listen to 
a sports coma. Make you and the guys stay with us. Uh, uh, What's up, sports world? This Big Q from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle. Life spell with a Y. L Y F D style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Review. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from Chief Bounce. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash view. Wow, what a huge honor it is to be named NBA 2K18 Legend Edition Cover Athlete. I really wouldn't be here without the guidance, love, and support of my mom and dad. Also, I'd like to thank my coaches, both college and professional. But most of all, I'd like to thank Kobe Bryant. He was the NBA 2K Legend Cover Athlete first. He's so awesome and handsome and has really nice natural teeth. Wait, what? I'll be looking at his teeth. This ain't over, Kobe. Payback's gonna be fun. NBA fans, NBA League Pass is your ticket to all of this season's action. Every exciting matchup, every incredible shot. Every big moment, every game live and on demand in HD quality on every type of device. Wherever you are, whenever you want. NBA League Pass has you covered. Sign up today. Follow the sports come on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. To the sports coma with Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. Welcome back to the sports coma with Big Q and the guy DC in the building with us. And we're doing this, man. We're talking about the Saints draft recapping it. Of course, we did about three picks. And we're going to start into our next one, which is Mr. Natrell Jamerson. Of course, he was a senior coming out of the University of Wisconsin, taken in the fifth round by the Saints. Now, Natron Jamerson, very special player, D.C. Uh, he's actually he was pretty he was pretty good, pretty fast in the 40-yard dash, had a 4-4 there. Um, you look at his statistics coming from Wisconsin that year. Not a lot to rat and rave about. 49 tackles, a sack and a half. He had two interceptions in there. But right, but the, the reality of the situation is Natrell Jamison can play safety. The Saints view him more as a cornerback. Uh, he has good size, 5'11", 200 pounds. And he also has special teams, guys, special teams capability as well. He has pretty decent ball skills, a little bit of everything. So. Go ahead, DC. What you what you think about I'm Mr. James? Go out on a limb and I'm gonna say something. People might not be happy about it. I like Natrell Jameson. Um, That's the limb. No, all right. The limb is coming up. Okay. It's just I'm I'm gonna travel down the tree. I like Natrell. He's a four four guy, very fast. Up the tree. Be down the tree. <laughs> I'm going to the stump, baby. Get to the roots. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, then come on now. All right, all right. You said a limb. The limbs you Well, I'm going to hit the limb before I go all the way down to the roots. Oh, okay. So you're starting from the top of the tree. Oh, there you go. Oh. Let's start with the leaves, baby. The leaves. Let's start with the draft stock, the stuff you can right. see, you know? Okay. I was got a little confused there. I just all wanted right, to follow right. you. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a little uh, dyslexic. Okay. 4-5, 40 time, man. Uh, most bench reps, uh, 
I, I got to say that, throw that in there when you bring him up because I think that's very impressive. Oh, yeah, you second, said that before. Second yeah. fastest safety, um, which is why the Saints can see him as a cornerback. Strongest safety. Uh, man, and, and, and this guy missed one tackle all year. That is impressive. That's very impressive. That is amazing. Right. Yeah. So, the limb. Let's get to the limb. And then we can go on down to the roots and pass this on to another seed. The limb is Von Bell. Bruh, <laughs> you got the whole put your chin strap on and tighten it up, baby. Because this guy, I know they're saying they're looking at him as a cornerback. But I think, you know, that three safety look we love to see. I think Coleman's almost a shoe in for free safety because he's going to have better ball skills than, than Von Bell. I think that's what they're looking for. Um, veteran player. Good at setting people up in position. But we ain't here to talk about Colton. That third safety spot in that package, a guy that don't miss tackles, that could play in the box with the type of freakish athleticism that Natrell has, of course he's coming in as a special teamer. But if he wows, I don't think it's so crazy to see him get some plays in that package. Von Bell is pretty good, so we're not just going to you know, get rid of him. But I think with the signing of Coleman, and this guy, depending on what he does, we could see a reduced role from Von Bell. Could possibly see that. So that's that's the limb, man. Uh, he's a perfect player for a three-safety package, in my opinion, to cover somebody out of the slot, to also blitz the quarterback. He was uh, he was pretty fast, pretty strong, so I imagine he would be able to get around some of those uh, offensive tackles, and especially if you got to set up in time right. you know. So that's the limb. I like this pick. It improves the special team. It improves our cornerback safety depth as well. So we ain't got to worry about probably signing another safety. Right. Uh, I, I do like the pick, too. It does in another thing. Like I said, it, it's it's a major depth. It adds major depth to the secondary. He is a guy with good size, speed, uh, adds special team to that. And he can, you can, wherever you need to plug him at, whether it's a corner or safety, I mean, he just provides that tremendous depth and competition. So it's it's just exciting to see that that we've added that speed and to and that uh, versatility to the Saints secondary. The days of Devontae Harris are over, y'all. Well, <laughs> let's move to another <laughs> cornerback, Cameron Moore from Boston College. Cameron Moore was picked up in the sixth round by the Saints. The Saints went DB crazy for a second. Back to back picks, defensive backs. They get Mr. Cameron Moore. From the University of, uh, what is this guy? Boston College. Okay, he's from Boston College. There we go. 5'10", 200 pounds uh, for Mr. Moore. And with the scouting report on him, is the stocky, determined cornerback who lacks man-to-man cover skills and ball production. Uh, we'll be looking for a draftable cornerback. However, Moore's toughness as a tackler and experience on special teams may get him a look from zone-heavy teams looking to add competition at the nickel spot. He's a three-year starter, tenacious worker, in the press, does everything in his power to disrupt receivers' release, very, very determined, uses a- active hands to punch and push opponents away, maintains feel-free vertical routes along the sideline, feisty at the catch point, looks to drive through the pass catcher and dislodge the ball, shows no hesitation to step downhill and run support, works off a block, springs into tackles, good finisher in space, and has experience as a gunner and jammer on special teams. Very key there, versatility. Uh, a lot to say about Cameron Moore, D.C., Thoughts on Mr. Moore? Well, I want to apologize to Mr. Moore based on the last show. So when I first initially saw him, I was going off of a few things that I read. I didn't do an in-depth analysis on this brother. And after coming away looking at him, I am very impressed. I compared him to Ken Crawley, but uh, when you pay attention, you pay attention. <laughs> uh, if, if you pay attention to pinch. <laughs> yeah, 50 then, tackles on the season, D.C. No sacks, no interceptions. Okay. If you pay attention to this guy, you'll see that he's way better than Ken Crowley coming in from day one. So okay. it's a, it's, it's a right. lot to be able to work with the shape and mold. Um, this guy is very versatile. He can do everything. The only thing he can't do, which I was a little down about because I like my cornerbacks to be able to get interceptions because I know Davenport and the rest of this defensive line is going to get some sacks. Yo. So um, right. he doesn't catch the ball a lot, but um, he's definitely a playmaker as in the fact that uh, he had a lot of good special teams plays. He makes tackles in the open field. And I think the Saints are very in-depth at uh, going find guys that, well, okay, you know we're in the new NFL, so they, they gonna, people going to catch passes. 
But after they make, catch the pass, make, you got to make sure that's make it. Play, make uh, tackles in space. Very right. good observation that's it. at so DC. I, I, I well like said. that, man. And yeah. uh, I think a lot of our secondary, even though we're thoroughly improved uh, with the addition of a guy like this, man, y'all got to be on your heels because this brother is coming to play. Uh, another quiet. We got a lot of quiet, humble players. I like that. Very talented guys. He's another one. Uh, you don't hear anything about him off the field, on the field. He's very reserved. He does his thing. He just go to work, man. Come out there with his lunch pail. Let's get it in. I'm eat my sandwich and let's get it in again. Okay, let, that that's that's pretty good on uh, Mr. Cameron Moore. And the other, the Saints took another player in the sixth round. They had two six round picks. The other guy they took was Mr. Boston Scott, running back from Louisiana Tech. Another fantastic uh, player. The Saints. Uh, brung, brung in to perhaps fit the role of we've heard Darren Sproles, we've heard Pierre Thomas, Boston Scott, five seven, two hundred pounds from out of Law Tech, runs a full five in the forty, had one hundred and sixty three attempts, uh, rushing nine hundred and thirty seven yards, eight touchdowns last year playing for Louisiana Tech, the Bulldogs, and you look at this young man, uh, Boston Scott, DC, he has a lot of he he he's a I mean. On footage, he's like a, he's a firefly. You look at how fast he is uh, catching the ball out the backfield. Everything the Saints do, I've seen a little bit of it in Louis. Uh, seen him do certain segments in at Louisiana Tech, running the ball in between the tackles. Once he get in the open field, you can forget about it. You won't catch him. I mean, his little legs be moving. I mean, he also has power too, uh, as well. So I don't know what this 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 analysis came from. Some of these scouters. Hating on him, talking about he don't have no power. I've seen power in the footage that I've seen with uh, Bart, uh, with with Scott. What is your perception on uh, well, Scott? This guy, I ain't eating none of the words I said about him. <laughs> I went back and dug a little more. I found his high school highlights. Man, they talking about he ain't got power. I seen him play. He returned a bunch of kicks and punts, touchdowns. Right. I seen him play. Well, he busted for fifty yards, and everybody on the team got to touch him. <laughs> so I. And this is, he was a teenager then. Uh, he bench presses 625, 615. Uh, I mean, squats, not bench press. That would be crazy. But he, he squats 625, 615. So your legs are your biggest muscles. And I don't think he lacking nowhere right there. So I've seen him run through people. I mean, he is 5'6", so it's not like he going to hit stick truck a guy. But he will run through you while you're trying to bend down to tackle him. And I think a lot of people underestimate saying he don't have no power because he's so small. But when you got guys that are normally, you know, the NFL is all about size, 6'3", 6'4", 250, and all this. But you got a guy who's 5'6". They have to bend all the way down to try to catch this little jitterbug. And I think you're going to see that. A lot of people looking foolish, and he's running through them as opposed to running over them and putting his foot on their cleats. He's just going to run right through them. A uh, very impressive uh, prospect. I think Sean Payton definitely is going to have some plays for him. Um, and he has a, a – a, a, what, what, what's the what, what's the word he always uses that he told AP? Uh, maybe it was a lie. <laughs> but he, had, he told AP he had a role for him. I think they have a role for this guy in the offense to get a few plays, hit throw defense off, get great change of pace back. He's balanced, can do everything. And you're going to see him in the return game, I promise. His seven-round pick in the final of the draft picks, the Saints got, uh, were able to draft – in the seventh round, pick number 245, Will Clapp, offensive lineman out of LSU. 6'4", 315 pounds, Mr. Versatility in every true sense of the word. Played offensive, he played every spot on the offensive line you want him. Center, guard and tackle, very excellent player. Has good overall size, experience, ability to handle reps, use consistent footwork, adequate ability to pin down blocks, have tough strength, latch on the long. I mean, the guy does it all. Uh, he had a few injuries that might have contributed to him dropping this far. The Saints might have got a, ju- a jewel in the rough. DC thoughts on Will Clap, Mr. Everything. Mr. Saints himself, Mr. LSU. Dad played for LSU. Very good offensive lineman. So is he. So his father was his pops. Hometown kid. Hunger hangs him up, or he possibly could have a Seco Calamante role. All this line does not show up and show out. Will Clap dominated in the SEC, so that's not why There it is. Will Clap in the building along with the rest of the Saints draft picks. We'd like to say welcome all the 2018 draft picks 
to the New Orleans Saints big ups. And coming to our next segment, we're going to go into the college fragrance and talk about who the Saints bring in the board to uh, as far as the undrafted guys go. We'll give you a full in-depth breakdown on that. Also, we'll cover other topics on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Sports Coma. Hang with us. Forget ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, A Guide to Positive Child Self-Image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. Thank you for listening to the Pro Media Network, who provides hours and hours of free entertainment to you and yours. If you are benefiting positively from our content, please donate to help us grow our platform by going to www.patreon.com slash the Pro Media Network. That's www.patreon.com slash the Pro Media Network. And support the true independent artists. Check out the Crown They Ass World Podcast with three kings covering all the news and issues that affect you and the ones you care about only on the PRO Media Network. Hello, New Orleans. You're listening to the Sports Coma, your new number one podcast on everything Saints, Pelicans, and a lot more. And now here's your host, Big Q and the Guys. Welcome back to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. And we talk to Saints, man. We just got through uh, going through the recapping or uh, analyzing the, uh, the Saints picks in the draft from one through seven. Now we're going to look at some of these undrafted college free agents that the Saints did bring up. Of course, on a previous show we did toward the back end, we showed you, went down a, a segment and showed you a few of the guys that the Saints did sign and are signing to bring a board to compete on the team so i just love it big ups to the saints for being even more aggressive in the undrafted signing period to fill holes that they uh, feel that the team has and of course one of those holes got to be tight ends because saints did a pretty damn good job of bringing in some undrafted tight ends and uh dc said in the previous show he was a fan of at least two of them Deion uh, Deion yelled out of western kentucky right and the other guy out of, uh, what was it, D.C.? Cam Surgeon from Wake Forest. From Wake Forest. And, of course, the Saints did bring in a huge got, uh, tight end. Nate Wozniacker. That's what he's talking about. Uh, Wozniak. 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 Six he foot nine. Two, six nine. 270 pounds. Nate Wozniak. Turned down camp invitations from Atlanta and Oakland to sign with the Saints. He, uh, caught only, now he only caught 28 passes in three years in college. But the Saints... They're going hard at them undrafted tight ends, and we got. I'm, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. DC, um, let's talk about uh, let's talk about a few of these undrafted guys, and I'm gonna go down the list uh, real quick. And um, of course, you tell me uh, which guy uh, kind of piques your interest based upon uh, the the position. I'm supposed to stop you while you're going on, like red light, green light. Okay. Yeah, but you know, I give you a quick quick analysis on uh, which ones that you might like. Of course, now this is the list that we have here. Tim, uh, Temple Owls wide receiver Keith Kirkwood. He was a guy that Saints brung in 45 uh, catches, 673 y- yards, had seven touchdowns last year. South Carolina Gamecocks Gox defensive tackle Tyler Stallworth. Uh, stop. 
He had five and a half times. Oh, that's, I know off top. I know this is your dude off top. I ain't had to go that far. Go ahead. Tyler Stallworth. A very disruptive player. Doesn't get a lot of sacks. Excuse me, Taylor Stallworth. Sorry. Doesn't get a lot of sacks, per se, from the D-tackle position. But I think this is the guy that we probably could get and wind up in that D-tackle rotation. Um, I know we got Lowman, who was, is a defensive end, but we put him in D-tackle and use him sometimes. But, I mean, we just need one more guy to show up the rotation. The other three, Tyler Davidson, Oyumata, and uh, Sheldon Rankins are all good. But we just need one more guy to show up the rotation. I think that can be stalwart. He played in the SEC, man. Uh, some of the best linemen in the league are in, in college are in the SEC. And uh, yeah, I think he had, uh, was it, 50 tackles? Uh, I don't remember his stats. But that don't matter. When we watch the tape. Five and a half tackles. Uh, five, for loss That's for five loss Five and a half But he rotated in and out though Yeah he's a rotational tackle right, already So right. I mean That's basically all What we need him that to do And I think he'll plug and play guy He's coming to do that He was very effective As a rotational tackle Um, For him to rotate Based on his effectiveness From what I've seen Maybe he has a problem With stamina Which is is fine We need a fourth we'll Rotational get him right. tackle So we can get him in camp And work him I think this is going to be A guy that makes the team Offensive guard Center Corey Helms Out of Wake Forest The Demon Deacons of course, he started four years between two programs. He had a family member illness that he transferred from one college to another, but a lot of experience for Corey Helms, versatile guy. Saints love those type of guys. Cincinnati Bearcat cornerback Lyndon Stevens, who bagged six interceptions and 20 pass deflections in his four-year career in Cincinnati. Saints been after him for a while. Now they got him on the team. But Colorado Buffalo offensive tackle Jeremy Irwin is another player. Started three years and been nominated to team captain twice while earning okay. a 2017 All Pac 12 team honorable mention. Tennessee Vol linebacker Colton Jumper. He had 14 Stop. tackles for loss of yards. He had two years as a starter and four and a half sacks as a senior. Stiz up. <laughs> I think uh, this is another guy, man. Uh, special teams work. You know, so you know you got to do that to make the team as an undrafted free agent. Um, most of the times, four five forty was his best forty time, but he averaged out to four six. So he's pretty quick, good outside linebacker, uh, SEC linebacker. So you know the pedigree on those guys. I know, right? Yeah, Colton Jumper gonna keep him jumping. You know that's what we hoping. Um, we got another another linebacker that Sean Payton likes. So uh, I think this guy. He reminds me from looking at him a little bit of Anzalone, but probably not such a uh, freak as Anzalone. But I think he has a good shot at making the team. He's very productive, uh, consistent, and smart linebacker. So I like Colton Jumper. All right, Eastern Illinois long snapper A.J. Hantek. Another guy, Hantek, accepting an invitation to the Saints rookie minicap practices and shares an alma mater with Saints head yeah. <laughs> coach Sean Payton always, always reaching back. Always going to get survivors. Keeping it real, Illinois. Eastern Illinois. Him, Western Kentucky Hilltop tight end Deion Yelder. He had 52 catches, 688 yards as a senior Stizza. while leading the team in seven touch, touchdowns. Stizza. <laughs> I like uh, Deion Yelder. Uh, a lot of people don't know. You just quoted those stats. That's good stats, right? That's pretty damn good stats. First year being a tight end. That's better stats than, isn't that better stats than, uh, uh, what's his name we have? Kobe Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> Different levels, but go ahead with your analysis. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to start sticking up for Kobe Flynn, man. Everybody beating this it's shit out late. of Kobe Flynn. <laughs> it's too late. Should have that a year ago. He about to get nah, out of here. June 1st cut, baby. Ago. Go ahead. But, uh, yeah, yo, the man, uh, I like his mentality, man. It's, it's, he reminds me of the guys we drafted. Uh, lunch pail mentality guy he'll run through a wall for his coach he'll do whatever you ask him he wants to help the team and uh, I think that's how they wind up playing him at tight end because if I'm not mistaken he played another position but uh, this guy didn't block kicks yeah, so he he's willing to too. go on right. special teams he's willing to do anything he football field, player man yeah, and he yeah. looked good at his tight end he's very smooth I've seen him making catches toe tapping and all that in his first year as a tight end man there seven receptions 600 yards so he has the capability to improve drastically. I think this is another guy that makes the teams. John Phillips, watch out. All right, here we go. Oregon Ducks defensive lineman Henry Mondu, another big fella. Tall interior lineman, 6'4", 297 pounds, had 17 tackles for loss, nine sacks in the last three years as a starter. Ole Miss Rebels offensive lineman Durante Bolden, was primarily a backup whoa, whoa. Oh, and spot starter. I didn't think I had to tell you to stop that fast. I thought you was going to rattle off some more about the Oregon Ducks. <laughs> about Mandu, you want to add to that? Mandu go create a monsoon. <laughs> Got right. another guy there, man. He can also come in and uh, he can compete. 
with a Star Wars for that four D tackle spot, man. Very, very productive guy. He played for Oregon, so you know everybody down in Davenport for his competition. So you know who he played for Oregon, man. Uh, a lot of good teams, and this dude had a hell of a production. A uh, very big guy, I guess, to talk about playing in the middle. But you know anything's possible. So I'm really rooting for him. I like him. He jumps off the tape. Very good selection. All right. Thank you, D.C. Uh, primarily the backup as a starting uh, left guard who appeared in 41 games. Talking about Ole Miss Rebel, Durante Bolden. Uh, moving on, Nebraska Cornhorse uh, offensive lineman David Neville. Uh, he's a huge tackler, a huge tackle, uh, six foot eight and a half, 333 Damn. pounds from Canada, appeared in 31 games over four years, Big accepting dude. an invitation to Saints' upcoming rookie camp. Big old dude. Wake Forest tight end Cameron Cern, I guess, Cerny. Sir, he is an stop, stop, he is stop, a stop, accomplished stop. receiving threat, collected 174 <laughs> catches, Please, 2,075 stop. yards, 21 touchdowns as a starter, and imitated Saints running cap. Go ahead, DC. This what you got dude, on this man? He's not signed. They invited him to the. What is his name? Game. How do you pronounce that? Uh, Cam Surgeon, I think. Is that Surgeon? Surgeon? Yeah, like Surgeon. Oh, okay, all right. Man, I watched the tape on this dude, and I'm scratching my head wondering how he didn't get drafted. Did, did he smoke yeah. weed or something? Uh, somebody dropped the ball test? on this guy because he was super I, productive. I don't know I don't why know, he didn't man. Right. I, he might have something in this. He, I don't see him blocking a lot, so maybe that's what it is. Yeah, pass. But as time, a man. passing threat, man, this dude is off the charts. He's better than than Yeldon passing. So yeah, he um, is. Maybe these guys compete against each other. I don't know. Maybe he got weak skin. Maybe, maybe crazy. I don't, I don't know why he didn't get drafted, but he's a hell of a football player, man. So I'm really excited to see what he's going to do in training camp. All right. Moving ahead. Safety JT uh, Gray was another guy. The Saints Gray led the Bulldogs last year in pass deflections with eight. Was third in to- total tackles with 64. The Saints get him. Tennessee wide receiver Josh Schmidt accepted a rookie minicap invitation. He caught 63 passes for 764 yards, had five touchdowns in his five-year career. South Florida Bulls running back Dearness Johnson. He was invited to the Saints rookie minicamp after setting a new school record in all-purpose yards. He had 4,886 yards and receptions by a running back. He had 73. Ohio State Buckeyes quarterback JT Barrett makes the team. Barrett accepted a rookie minicamp long shot to make the roster. It's, it's oh, also being updated. Oh, no, no, I got to stop you right That up, he baby. agreed to a three-year contract. There, there you go. And which is typical for undrafted free agents, whether Barrett sees the agreement to, uh, to its end remain to be seen. Very stop. interesting uh, thing, D.C., 9,434 yards, 104 touchdowns, and just 30 interceptions in his career. No, no, I'm the sorry. That's wrong. That. I'm let's sorry. The, that's wrong. I'm let's sorry. use the Tim Tebow rule. He, he had 147 touchdowns. I don't remember how many interceptions he had. But he only had six losses his whole college career. That's insane. But did not get drafted. It's insane, man. Yeah. Uh, this dude is, is very productive. A lot of people say he can't throw. I like to disagree. He's not the best deep ball thrower, but he can put the ball down the field. So hopefully the Saints can work with him on that. But if you can mold this guy up, sit him for maybe three years and shape him, man, this may be our, our quarterback to hand the reins over to if Taysom Hill doesn't pan out. I'm very excited about uh, JT Barrett. He reminds me of, you know, I got to put a label on him, Aaron Brooks. I don't, I Watch the don't tape. see it. Watch the tape. I've seen him play. I don't F- see Aaron Brooks in it. Fast, can escape the pocket, can make some He's throws. He's an athlete, no doubt about can it. Can make some throws, not flashy. Doesn't really just fly off the screen at you, but mm-hmm. very productive. Same way Aaron Brooks was. DC, you know what? This guy was tremendous last year in in o, o, at Ohio State. He put on a hell of a year. His he did. best year. Twenty. He had uh, a sixty-four point seven percentage completion percentage. That's amazing. Uh, that's amazing. He had uh, twenty nine running quarterback for a run. Right, absolutely. Twenty nine uh, two thousand nine hundred thirty nine passing yards. Average eight yards a throw. Thirty five touchdowns and only nine interceptions. One hundred and sixty two point two QB rating. Uh, JT Barrett is now with the Saints. That's major yeah. move. So big ups to the Saints. Uh, let's roll on and get the rest of these guys in here before we go to break, and then we'll go. And that's also guy I gotta talk about. We, we also Nate Wansniak, a 69270. That's your dude. Uh, right, big old he guy. Big. 28 passes He's over three years in college. Quarterback Jesse Ertz, another guy that's a brother of uh, the, the, the tight end that plays for the Eagles. He is also there. Southeastern lineman Mahi Tahuma. Used to play with the LSU Tigers. Uma, Uma. He's here. And Florida State Seminoles wide receiver Ehrman Lane is another uh, candidate that also judged. We also have uh, the 
other uh, quarterback that's coming aboard here, if I could just pull his name up, the fella from Troy, uh, D.C. Do you have that information on the man from Troy? Uh, the guy from Troy, you talking about Brandon Silvers. Brandon Silvers. Brandon Silvers is, right. so is yeah, definitely with the Saints. And this guy, man, it's, it's scary what he can do. Okay, well, oh, yes. Yeah, let's go to the break okay, first, and we'll talk I'll about Mr. Silvers on the other side to break. You listen to the Sports Coma. Stay with us. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is the Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Clear, clean, great-tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book, offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings and potential moves, unbiased opinions and straight up facts, with statistical analysis from G-Balance. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. Follow the Sports Coma on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You're listening to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. So I'm back to give my dissertation, uh, my dissection of Brandon Silvers, man. A real peer pocket passer. I'm glad this dude uh, chose us over the Eagles. He had an invitation to go to the Super Bowl championship, but he wanted to come to the Saints. Put in that work. A hometown kid from Orange Beach, Alabama, man. 70% completion rate over the career passing. Uh, 70, 71 touchdowns, 29 interceptions. 10,000 passing yards over four years. Pretty good, pretty good for a 6'3", 219-pound kid out of Alabama, about two hours away from his hometown kid, homegrown. Uh, really looks like someone who could put the ball pretty much anywhere from the pocket. Not a lot of mobility, but I'm excited to see him there too. And I think we have a real fierce quarterback competition and a competition all around the board with all these undrafted free agents in our draft. So we looking good. Big Q, what you think, bro? I think that's a pretty good assessment. Uh, DC uh, well said uh, it'll be the best QB competition we've seen in some time, perhaps. Of course, we know Drew Brees is obviously the Drew Brees the Ted, Ted, Ted behinds up on the trick passes. But it's, but right, it's going to be a battle behind him to see, you know, you know, probably the Saints might practice squad one of these guys. They got a lot of young, capable guys here, man. And uh, it's not going to be a cakewalk for Tom Savage, so he better have his football in hand and he have his football become a savage. Mind. Right, he better do it because <laughs> well, this other Ron kid. Mark Ingram must have become savage. Because Taysom Hill pretty much just solidified a spot because not only he just holds the clipboards, but he's on special teams making tackles. So he's kind of play it into that dynamic of not just being somebody holding the clipboard. Anyway, let's move into some of our other topics in this segment. We're going to finish out before we head out. And let's hit this one, DC. The weakest spot left on our team, post-draft, post-free agency period, post-college free agent signings, what would be your assessment as the weakest position left? And of course, y'all guys out there, comment. Please comment. 
Uh, give us some interaction on this topic. Tell us who you believe is the weakest spot. DC, who do you believe is the weakest spot on our team left? Fullback. Um, we basically got Zach Line and who else? I think some other guy. Uh, they're, they're okay. I really would have liked us to get that kid from Oklahoma, but um, we didn't. So, I mean, we basically plugged all, all our holes, in my opinion, for as depth. And I, I feel like we have an impact player on every level of our defense and our offense. Um, you can go down the list. Um, some positions we have several impact players. So the only weakness I can think of is fullback. <laughs> yeah, I would have to I, – I don't know if I, I'll add the fullback in there, but, I mean, at first I was thinking they didn't do anything to address the tight end position to after the draft. And I'm kind of so curious. Pro- prospects I showed you. I seen those guys, guys yelled at. Got like three of them. One of them might turn into something. Right. Yeah. And I and I, I could see that because we have a lot of the established guys right here. They own one year contracts left, and and perhaps the Saints won't get a little bit more versatile. But Yelda and the other guy, Shereen, a Shereen, whatever his name is, those guys Lake are real. Forward, right. They're real intriguing, and they have that big old tight end come up there from Minnesota, six foot eight, two hundred and eighty pounds, damn near an offensive lineman. You know, it'll be interesting to see what these guys could do. But, you know, I, my call would be tight end, you know, based upon that. But, all right, let's move into the next topic. And we're going to talk about the NFC South outlook. Of course, the Saints wasn't only the only other team to make upgrades on their teams, you know, coming into it. Atlanta, of course, had an interesting draft. They got Kelvin Ridley, 26 overall in the first round. Second round, they got another cornerback, Isaiah Oliver, out of Colorado to help out with their secondary. Third round, they got uh, Dedron Sanat, a defensive tackle to replace Dentarius Poe, another running back. In the fourth round, behind those splendid two running backs, they got Ito Smith out of Southern Miss. And then a sixth-round draft pick, they, they were able to take Russell Gage, our former LSU Tiger guy. And, of course, in the sixth round, Foy Olakun for a linebacker from Yale who's probably just a depth uh, special team sign, perhaps a, pre- a special teams guy. Um, you know, D.C., looking at Tampa Bay running down these, and then, of course, we'll just bounce it back and then give our, our, our takes. Tampa Bay, first round, Vita Vey, big old defensive tackle, sits right next to Gerald McCoy. Very interesting. Ronald Jones out of USC in the next round. They had two uh, second round, look like they had three uh, second round picks. Uh, MJ Stewart, the cornerback out of North Carolina. Carlton Davis, Carlton Davis, the cornerback from Auburn. In the third round, they got Alex Copper, offensive guard for Humboldt State. Round four, they got Jordan Whitehead, a safety out of Pittsburgh. Fifth round, Justin Watson, wide receiver from Penn. Uh, and in the sixth round, Jack Cicci, linebacker for Wisconsin. And then, of course, the Carolina Panthers did themselves well in the draft. They've got DJ Moore out of Maryland in the first round. Second round, Dante Jackson, the cornerback from LSU. Round three, Rashawn Golden, safety from Tennessee. Tennessee. Round four, Ian Thomas from Indiana. And then also in the fourth, they got Marquise Haynes, an edge rusher from Mississippi. Round five, Jermaine Carter, linebacker from Maryland. And, of course, the team was able to get two Second round guys, Andre Smith, the linebacker from North Carolina, and Kendrick Norton, big defensive tackle from Miami. Now, that is some of – those are all of the draft picks for our NFC South foes. Now, D.C., let's get into this for a few minutes before we bounce to our final topic. But whom out of all these picks that I just named out who you believe – and, of course, you guys interact with us as well to tell you – tell us who you think – or have got a serious upgrade to give the Saints some opportunity. Because I think, and I'm not just saying this because well, I'm a Saints fan, D.C., I think that the Saints are legitimate uh, Super Bowl contenders. A lot of people feel that way. In NFC South, who's going to be the biggest hurdle uh, based upon uh, what we see here? Um, Now, you got to take in consideration what I'm saying. It'll be the biggest hurdle for the Saints within the division just based on playing them. Um, we got a lot of good teams. Atlanta can be a playoff team again. Uh, so can Carolina. But I honestly think the biggest hurdle for the Saints in the division rivalry is going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tampa Bay had an excellent draft. Um, they got V to V to pair alongside a Gerald McCoy, who already gives us headaches. And they have Jason, Pierre-Paul, Jason Pierre-Paul already there on offense. Curry. 
Don't forget Curry they got from Philly. Yeah, and Van, Van Curry, I almost forgot about him. Um, the hole they had on offense was running back. They got Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones fits well with with Very, and then they got the other guy they had from last year to add him with him. Right. Like Peyton Barber. So, yeah, Tampa Bay looks formidable. Very, very good running back there. And then they got a bunch of other guys to fill out their roster. They got a decent cornerback out of Auburn, too. I actually like that guy. Um, they had a very excellent draft, and they made key free agent acquisitions. But um, a close second, I would have to say Atlanta. I think the impact of Calvin Ridley wow. is going to be astronomical. Two Alabama wide receivers. To pair that up with Muhammad Sanu. And, yeah. and, you know, that's headaches for any team, not yeah. just us. Yeah, you're absolutely right. A lot of people say Atlanta. They like Calvin Ridley. Plug Tampa next Bay going to be the sleep. I'm telling you, man, uh, people are to, uh, sleeping on Tampa Bay. They, I mean, they don't Jones. think Jason Pierre, Paul Vita V, and Gerald McCoy and Vinnie Curry. Gonna, that ain't nothing. That's a new terrible. That ain't nothing to sleep on. That's, that, a, new, that's a new terrible line. That, you got to run screens all day. That's going to be. That's, that's <laughs> gonna be the Tampa Bay is, is definitely something I was looking at when they had that draft. And the things they did not afraid to see. And they drafted good too. They they filled filled most of all of their holes in this draft right. on the offensive line, especially the, the on the defense the they, and cornerback wise. Now you mentioned Carlton Davis, but coach. MJ Stewart from North Carolina is a game or two. But yeah, go ahead. You saying uh, the coach is the problem? Yeah, the only thing holding Tampa Bay back that I, I think will stop them from exceeding is their coach. I'm I'm not sold on him. Uh, last year, their team basically mentally malfunctioned after that game with us. And um, they weren't able to recover from that. And I think they're going to come back this year. I mean, don't think you're going to get the same team you got last year against these people. Them people are going to be pissed when they play us. Yeah, I we, think it's going to be a very hard fought game. And they did beat us, I believe, the second time they played us last year. So um, Tampa Bay has always been a hard team for the Saints to play. And I think uh, this year ain't going to be no different. Probably be a little harder than usual. Yes, uh, yeah, that's absolutely right. We're going to look at it uh, as well. Uh, people... Please interact with us. Give us your commentary. Hit the, the, the comment section up. Tell us who you believe will be the biggest hurdle we for the Saints in the NFC Atlanta. South. So, Atlanta, of course, Atlanta, 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 Atlanta done some stuff. But, hey, man, don't sleep on Tampa. And Carolina, too, got Atlanta some weapons for Cam, receiver, Joe, uh, Cam Newton. So, But let's move it to the next topic. And they lost They lost their D tackle. So their they defense may not be as potent, even though I think it'll still be good. Right. Let's move it to the next topic. And that's the top 100 came out uh, a few days ago and listed a few Saints very, very, I don't know to say high or low, but not right. Let's put it to low, you like that. Low, low, low. They had the, the top 100 came out and listed uh, cornerback Marshawn Lattimore, rookie of the year, as 82. And that's the NFL Network's ranking, 82 on the list. And they revealed Michael Thomas, who appeared on the list, at 81, now Marshawn Lattimore played in 13 games. He had 52 tackles, led the Saints in interceptions with five. He had 18 pass defenses. He was voted the NFL Rookie of the Year and Defensive Rookie of the Year in December and the Rookie of the Week on four occasions. He's the top-rated cornerback and was selected selected to the 2018 Pro Bowl. So not only did he win the Rookie of the Year, but he was a Pro Bowler in his initial year as well. And, of course, we don't need to say too much about the ever – Powerful Mike Thomas who continues to sin. Go watch the Minnesota Vikings games but, and see what he did to Xavier Rhodes. Right. Blocking too. Yeah, he punished. I mean, he <laughs> was physical. Him out the game. Yeah, he did. He was pretty tough. But the question is, we look at it. This is not right here. You have Michael Thomas at eighty-one out of a hundred, and then you look at uh, Marshawn Lattimore's eighty-two out of a hundred. I hope for the sake of this 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 damn ranking that it's voted by the players now. Yeah, well, the players is is, is 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 some hate going on with the players. <laughs> Dude, stop hating. Y'all need to stop hating, man. Y'all know y'all most of y'all out there ain't as good as Mike Thomas, or as good as this kid a lot of them. I know a lot of them old veterans never made a Pro Bowl. None of them. Right. Some of them even got three interceptions in one season. Stop <laughs> hating and get a man that's due diligence. To have them way up there in the eighties, that's ridiculous, man. I mean, you know what? And then when it comes out, you're going to see how, how ridiculously stupid it is. And they might as well throw it out if they're not going to keep it real. Yeah, but what's your take on that quick? It definitely should be higher than the 80s. Um, I think by Marshawn being a rookie, you know, you know, you got to kind of like uh, get scared back. That's how they feel. But you can't hide Alvin Kamara. So when I see where they put Alvin Kamara, that's going to show real hate. It's gonna be if, in he the fall, 70s. if he fall in the 70s or the 60s, then you yeah, man, get rid of this. Shit. Look, man, all to y'all NFL players out there, stop hating, man. <laughs> Give them people they do. 
do you think they should belong? They should be in the top, at least in the top 30. At least in the top 30. Ain't too many wide receivers played better than uh, Thomas last year. Bottom line. True. So there we go. But anyway, that's the end of the show. Thank y'all for listening to the Sports Combo with Big Q and the Guy. And as always, if you enjoy the show, you can give us some support by going to patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network. Make a donation uh, to help build a platform. Or join our social media pages at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, everywhere. For me in D.C., peace. You're listening to the PRO Media Network. The next level in entertainment. You're listening to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. At the Posh Lifestyle, I go there for all my health needs. They offer great deals on organics, water filters, healing magnetics, healing crystals, clothing, books, DVDs, vitamins, and a lot more. They even have free shipping when you spend over $100 on most products. With secure online ordering, fast service, and great products, I save some money, and I'm improving my health doing it. It's a win-win, so do what I did. Go to shop.theposhlifestyle.com. That's shop.theposhlifestyle.com. That's shop.theposhlifestyle.com. So upgrade your lifestyle with The Posh Lifestyle and love what you do. 